Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on the Ariston Microgenus HE. So I've been caught up to this boiler um, because there's a couple of things. There's one there's no display and the other one was it was displaying a block condenser fault. So what we're going to do today's video, we're going to use our new concept using our fault analysis quadrant. So I got one of my students with me today, Tom, and he's going to use his fault analysis quadrant to help him pinpoint what he feels the problem is. So this new concept is going to be something what you guys can use to help him pre-diagnose jobs or point to the problem of what they believe it is. So Tom, what we're going to do in your analysis, um, the fault analysis quadrant, from what we just said, so the first thing we've got is no display and then the other thing what we had was um, this fault was showing the block condense so in your quadrants what would you be looking at there looking at the block um, uh, quadrants um, you're basically looking for the, um, the condensate that's blocked belongs to the ignition failure section Right, so, so okay, so let me stop you there. So, in the four quadrants, just read out what the four quadrants are. The first one is no central heating, second one, no hot water, third one, ignition failure, and fourth is the losing or increasing of pressure. Um, now, there's, there's clearly um, a couple of issues here because, first of all, he, he, he has no display, which means there's, there's no power at the, um, the display unit there. Um, and he says it was displaying um, A A77, which is a condensate block issue on this boiler. Um, but in saying that, um, if there's no display, it must be something else. Okay. Fault. So in the fault diagnostic um, quadrant, so that's under what section was that again? Uh, ignition failure. Ignition failure. So let's go through the um, pass well the sections within that. Quadrant. So okay. what? Are the, what are them? So the first one will be um, the condensate will be blocked. The second one will be um, a gas valve blocked or faulty. The third one will be gas supply. The fourth one you could have a blocked injector. Um, the fifth one you'd have a spark electrode spark gap issue. Uh, sixth one flame sensing electrode fault. Uh, seventh one would be spark generator. Number eight would be the ignition lead fault. And number nine would be a burner, faulty burner. Ten would be a flu issue. Um, number eleven would be a fan or air pressure switch fault. Or twelve would be the ignition PCB. Right. Okay. So in what we're looking at now in this fault, in that quadrant, there's two what kind of points of our yeah, situation. Tony, from what the gentleman says, um, briefly he had a fault code on there and he says it was the condensate which would be number one on this list here. And the second one, because we don't have any display, leads me to believe that there might be an issue with that PCB as well. Yep. So, using that fault diagnostic quadrant has helped us look into the areas, what, what's actually going on in reality. So, we're going to dive inside this boiler and let's see what's really going on. The reason for that bit of a struggle was it's got the wrong screws in really here and that one they, they should have came out and it's catching on the back of that plastic but anyway it's down now you can see so now you're going to undo that screw and that one and then this panel will come off So just push it up, upwards. That's it. Right, so this is a PCB inside here, so we're gonna have to get inside here. Let's check to see if the fuse is gone. So we're gonna remove these screws here. I think there's some at the back as well, and I'll get inside there. Yeah, take that off. That's it. Right, let's see. Can you see? It's got a little bit of that one there, 
light on the other end display. Now the first one we want to do is look if it, see if it's a fuse. Difficult to see if these ones. Are, oh, there's one there. I can see it. If you're this up from there. Mm -hmm. So there are the fuses there, so we get our multimeter and check onto you to across them fuses. We're now going to get our multimeter across that fuse. We're going to pump starts buzzing, yeah, so that's okay. Let's try the next one. Yep, yeah, so the fuses are okay. Alright, so we'll move on from there. So we're just doing like a step-by-step -step process going through the logic of what it would happen. So we've just got to cross everything off as we go through. I'm going to explain this on camera so you guys can see step-by-step -step what you need to do in your diagnostics. So the next thing what I'm going to suggest, we're going to check the power supply coming in. So let's have a look where it comes in. Well. If you look carefully amongst all these wires, as shown me on the screwdriver, this is at the end of my screwdriver is where the power's coming in. And I can see a wire bare. Can you see that wire? And that brown, it's sticking out. So let me just see if it's let's get that there. I'm just seeing if that's actually come out. See? I'm moving it there. Can you see it with, with my fingers? It's barely in. It looks like it's a wire what's been shared. They're using the same line from something else. And I feel like it's probably supplying the power to this. They've got a hive. So that's the, the sender. So maybe it's in, but it's not being done properly. So I don't think that's the actual cause, but what we're going to do, we're going to check, I'll have to try and tidy that up and see if we're getting a live neutral across there, or we're getting power in the way. Now what I just did then, I just noticed this wasn't even on, I just went like that, you can see that movement, it wasn't even connected to the board, so it might have come adrift. You can see the line neutral there. So I'm going to try tidy this up and then reconnect that back onto the PCB and try it again turn the power back on. You can see I've tied it up now that's a lot better. I'm now going to reconnect it back to the PCB and we'll give it a go see what happens. I think what's probably caused this from being Coming away from the board, this here is a bit tight here, so I'm going to loosen this bit, this bracket, and shove it through more, and then it'll give it a bit more play so that can go on the PCB better. And let's pull it through a bit. Half an inch or something like that will yeah. do. Keep getting that screw back in again now. I think it's because it's coming on the corner and it's not allowing it to come on the Just going to put the top back on and give it a try. We're going to turn on. Wow, here we go. So, there you have it. It's still showing the code, but at least now we've got power on. So we know why the power's cut, because that lead was too short, and you've seen how we've rectified that. So, what we're gonna do, the condensed trap's been cleaned out. So we're gonna press this reset, let's see if it Wrong one, let's try that. 
open. So that's not resetting. Oh yeah, we've got it. We've got it now. Now what we'll do, put demand on, we'll try the hot water and see what happens. So, so I'm going to turn on the tap. Yeah. Got ignition. And there you go. Wonderful. Now you can see something as simple as that. What basically happened really at the end of the day is just that plug will come off. Oh. Someone else could have made a big error and made said that the PCB's gone, made it a big job, and you can see it's something very simple. But this is what happens when you don't have a foundation, a system to follow. And using this bio pair library, you can see now the beauty of it. So guys who are new, or even people who are experienced, you can always slip up. So you can refer back to this library and see numerous videos like this. So, I think that's going to be the end of really the video reel really, because we've got it going, you've seen what we did. So you can do our diagnostic and come up with a solution. I've just put the heat inside on now. I've just done it there, I've pressed that override button, this bottom one there, press that one. Shut the tap. In fact, you can see if I show you clearly on here. This is the um, demand LED, and for the hot water one, that one will come on when the tap's opened. So the heat's on. And we're all good to go. So we're just going to put the water back together, and I think that'll be it. So that's going to be the end of this video, we've put the boiler back together. A couple of things I want to say. Um, first one, if you read that carefully, this is what we do to our customers. We appreciate our customers and that's what we send them. Second thing, um, it's a free gift for you guys. So if you click at the bottom of this video, the link, you can get a link to my free ebook which explains this fault analysis quadrant. So it's a free gift for you guys. You can have it free of charge. Just click the link below and then you can find out more about that. And I think that'll be it. So you'll see me on the next um, video on the Border Pair Library. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.